Welcome to Bring Your Brilliance. Are you ready to find and amplify your voice? Looking to be inspired by those who are already out there making it happen? Listen in as we shine a light on those who bring their full, authentic selves to do what they love, make no apologies, and don't try to fit into other people's boxes. With your host, Carla Taylor, who, after years of being inspired by the brilliantly shining people she was meeting, decided others need to hear these stories too. Hello, 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 and Happy New Year! It is the first Friday of January 2020. Happy New Year! I hope you all had a wonderful holiday season and a wonderful New Year's and were able to ring in the year however it best fit for you. And I am so, so happy to be here with you on this Friday talking about the very first of many success strategies, which I do every first Friday of the month on the Bring Your Brilliance channel here on the Inspired Choices Network. And again, my name is Carla Taylor, and we are talking about, well, in every episode, we're talking about bringing your brilliance. And today's episode, we are talking about making the next decade count. We are not only launching a brand new year, we are launching a brand new decade, and that's pretty significant. So, and I know there's a few people out there that say, oh, the next decade doesn't start till next year, but you know what? We started the 80s in 1980, we started the 90s in 1990, this is the next decade, and we are entering a new era, and if you're at all attuned to the energies of the earth around us and everything else that's going on, there's some seismic shifts happening. There's some major things going on. There's a lot of people who are, are noticing it and feeling it. And there's a lot of energy pouring into, coursing into this next year and this next decade that we are entering now. And so today, I want to talk about making it count. And specifically, we are talking about um, something I'm also calling 120 blinks, which I'll get to in a little bit of what that actually means. But let me ask you a few questions. So are you ready? Have you been getting ready or are you waiting till now to get ready? But are you ready for the new year and the next decade? So I want you to think about 2010 and where were you then? What was going on in your life? What's changed in your life since then? And what stayed the same? And then think about 2030, 10 years from now, where do you want your life to be? So that's part of what we're going to be talking about today as we kick off this this new year, this new decade, and um, we really hone in on what matters most and what's going to be happening and what was happening. So let's take a moment to, to walk down memory lane because I think at the end of things, at the beginning of things, we tend to be in a reflective state. And we want to learn from our past while not being stuck in it, but we also want to acknowledge how much growth is happening and how ha, has happened and how much has changed and where we really have been and where we're going. So think about 10 years ago. The year was 2010. So I know for me, my kids are 17 now. I have triplets who are 17. So 10 years ago, they were seven years old. And 10 years ago, I had just started my first business in 2009, actually in the midst of the recession. Remember, we were in the recession, the pretty horrible time for a lot of people. The economy was incredibly depressed. We had all sorts of things going wrong with, with the housing bubble and just all those things that people were starting to climb out of in 2010. But it was still a very difficult time. Uh, financially for many people, economically for the entire country and world, it, it was tough. Um, I had started my business actually in the midst of the recession, and when I went back and looked, um, to, according to at least one report, it was the very lowest day of the recession was the day I started my company, um, which oftentimes having a lack of something or not having something is where innovation is birthed and comes from because there weren't opportunities. I was in the training and development space and that's one of the first things to go and companies are are tightening up their belts and you know trying to, to to make it through and they were sometimes hiring still for some projects but they weren't hiring new roles or even pouring into their own departments of that because they needed to just survive 
And I realized that all the jobs I had been interviewing for wasn't, you know, they, they weren't even hiring anymore, even though in a couple of them out of thousands of candidates, I was one of the top two, thought I was going to have the job. And they're like, ah, we got to put a pause on this whole thing. And so I realized my opportunity was going to be the opportunity that I created. And so I ended up uh, starting my own company in March of 2009. So by 2010, I was still just, you know, barely getting my feet wet and I was still just learning things. And um, it was it was a, a time of great growth for me. So I had gone through this incredible program here. It's actually based here in Indianapolis, but they have uh, classes all over the world, actually. And it's called Zarvos. Uh, training beyond your or, or not beyond your best that was the old name uh, breaking through and it was this incredible eye-opening awakening type of deep transformational coaching that really changed my life it changed the course of who I was and where I was going and understanding myself at a level I'd been completely blind to and so 2010 was the year that that my eyes opened and I started seeing the world very differently than I ever had before. So it was a pretty monumental year for me heading into that decade. So here I am 10 years later, which on the one hand seems like a really long time, and on the other hand it seems like a really short time of of change and growth and everything else. But I am such a different person than I was 10 years ago. I have grown and grown and grown exponentially over those years. Uh, when I first went through it, I know my daughter started telling everyone that her mommy went through a training program that made her a better mommy. And I hadn't told her anything about this particular program. I'd gone through other trainings before, but she noticed that change in me. And in fact, a lot of people did. And when you start showing up in your life and you start showing up for yourself and getting really aware of who you are and what you're doing and how you're processing things in your own head and how you are actually creating your own experience, when you start to realize that the entire world and everything that is happening is actually neutral and you're the one who assigns meaning to everything, even if you don't realize you're doing it. So we're conditioned by our families of origin. We're conditioned by our cultures. We're conditioned by all of this input we're getting throughout our lives. And if we don't stop to become aware of that, we just blindly follow all of it. And when you start to realize that everything you think has been taught to you or you've learned somewhere along the way about what meaning to assign to that, and it's actually completely within your control to interpret things differently. So instead of being super reactive to bad things in your life, instead of getting emotionally bereft if something bad happens or getting really angry if somebody, you know, cuts you off in traffic. I used to have terrible road rage. I lived in Atlanta and people were mean and aggressive and I was right there with them. I was like, oh, you're going to do that to me, you know. Um, and now it's kind of funny to me. I'm not that way at all because I have completely shifted as a person to recognize I am completely in control of my emotions. I don't have to go down that emotional rabbit trail or, you know, all of those different things if I don't want to. And then I don't want to. Who wants to spend their life in anger and reactivity? Um, and, of course, it wasn't like flipping a switch. It's been a lot of hard work and a lot of growth on my part and a lot of coaching. I've had lots of different coaches and each one of them has taught me something different. And I highly recommend if you've never had a coach, for sure, get a coach. If you've had one and you haven't for a while, get a, get a coach. Um, if you can't afford a coach, find someone to coach you that you can then maybe coach back or, or trade some services with or something, but get a coach. Um, I don't recommend doing a lot of trading services because that can also get kind of upside down and, and you actually listen more and do more if you do pay. But figure it out because that's one of the most important things you can do to not only grow yourself as a person, but even to grow your income, your opportunities. So here's my plug for coaches. <laughs> coaches and coaching and training have absolutely changed my life in the, the past 10 years, and I cannot wait to see how it continues to change and evolve. Now, I'm actually now working with some incredible coaches and incredible minds um, who are really helping take me to the next level in places I, I simply cannot get on my own. And so if you want different results, you've got to do different things, including talking to different people and different minds from your own who can give you a new perspective, who can give you that outside 
reflection back of what's actually happening and who has new information that you've never heard before because that's the only way you're going to keep growing and stretching and becoming even better. So I was still back in 2010 <laughs> a little bit more about what was happening there. Of course, what I was talking about with the recession was very, very real for everyone. Um, that was the year that the health care reform bill, the Affordable Care Act, was passed and signed into law by Barack Obama, who was president at the time. Um, we had uh, SpaceX launched one of their their first launches. We were at the Apple iPhone 4. Do you remember the 4? I don't actually really remember it, but <laughs> that was where our technology was back then. Um, so that there's a lot. And technology-wise, my goodness, what has happened in the last 10 years is insane. Um, oh, Justin Bieber was new on the scene. He has been discovered in a YouTube video in 2008. So he was at the top of the charts in 2010. Um, there was a lot going on in that world as well. So think about your own life. Where were you? What were you doing 10 years ago? And then what are some of the ways that you have changed and grown that you're happy about? And maybe what are some things you're not so thrilled about, about what you've done or choices that you've made? Because everything's a learning point. In that time span, I also got married and am now getting divorced. So I learned a lot about my relationship patterns, who I was choosing, who I was showing up as in those relationships. I actually, though I did get divorced, I had a husband who did help me really understand and learn and grow in my relationship skills. We were able to talk through things. I figured out my triggers and buttons that people could push. Um, I tended to actually attract and be attracted to a, a very narcissistic type of personality, partly because of some things from my childhood, but also I just was trying to win that person over. Um, and I didn't realize I had that pattern of picking people because I thought I was picking really different people because that was actually my second marriage. And he was very different from my first husband, Yet, but yet there were still some of those um, very self-focused tendencies that I didn't realize I was choosing because I wanted to solve that relationship challenge in my life and we will we will do that if we don't have a, a lot if we do have a lack of awareness if we don't have awareness we will keep choosing the same situation until we learn from it so learn from it <laughs> learn from the lesson that you're trying to teach yourself and get for yourself and that's the other thing that is so so true is that you know everything is a choice every single thing and life is not what happens to you but for you so why is this happening for you? And why are you at a deep soul level choosing the thing that you're choosing? Because you are. You do have a choice in in every part of your life and even every part of your day, how you choose to wake up and when, how you choose to have a morning routine or not, how you choose to feed yourself and nourish yourself, whether or not you exercise, what you're doing for work, who you're putting up with, what you're putting up with. There are so many things that you are in charge of that we often start thinking, well, I'm just a victim to, to, to my circumstances, and that is absolutely not true. So we are already at our break. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Then we're going to fast forward 10 years and talk about 10 years from now and some other lessons that we can learn from. So, again, my name is Carla Taylor. You are here on Bring Your Brilliance radio show on the Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back. We all have a personal brand. It's what people say about you when you're not in the room. What if you knew how to clearly and confidently communicate your value in a compelling way? Tune in to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show with personal branding and LinkedIn strategist Carla Taylor to discover the tools, resources, and inspiration you need to get started and keep growing. Are you ready to make your mark? Learn how to bring your brilliance by listening to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Mountain, and 7 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is the Bring Your Brilliance radio show with personal branding and LinkedIn strategist Carla Taylor. To join today's conversation, Call in the U.S. at 815-880-8255 or Canada at 613-800-8736 or Skype at Inspired Choices Network. Or ask a question or send a comment by email at bringyourbrilliance at gmail.com. 
Now, back to the program. Welcome back. This is Carla Taylor. We are talking about bringing your brilliance here on the Bring Your Brilliance radio show. We're on Inspired Choices Network, and we were just talking about choices, which is perfect to talk about on this network (laughs) because it really is about making those inspired choices that are going to put you in the places and give you the opportunities that you want to have in your life. And I was just talking about, you know, a lot of people believe they're a victim of circumstance or someone once said to me, what if you don't like the hand that you were dealt? And there are a lot of different ways to play the game, but sometimes you can just completely change and play a different game. You don't have to stay in that circumstance. Um, And a good example of this, I was just talking to one of my coaching clients and she's been really unhappy at work. And she has had this boss that has just been this point of contention. He's very... Um, not not very mature of a person, and he does a lot of things that are are thwarting her success, actually. And they've just had a very contentious relationship, and she tried and tried and tried to work with him to work with HR. She's really trying to make it work. And even though she knows that's really not something she needs to stay in, she's been afraid to make a move. And yet, after a while, you realize there's only so much you can do. She's really tried to be this positive person. She's tried to influence that relationship. She's tried a lot of things. But ultimately, that person is who he is. And so sometimes, you know, we can join a great company, but the boss person that we report to is what makes or breaks our our circumstance there sometimes. And there's there's a lot we can do to manage up. At the end of the day, there are times where you really just need to get out of that situation, whether you go somewhere else in the company or you go somewhere else entirely. But she's in a situation now where it's really time to find something new, and she's wanting to leap into this new career for herself and make that transition. And yet she is um, worried that she doesn't have the skills or she's gotten some feedback that she's, quote, unquote, not qualified because she doesn't have the history or the track record of it. And again, with the career coaching that I'm doing and everything else with her, I've been working with her on gaining her confidence, repositioning what she's talking about, even how she's putting her resume together, all of those things, so that she can talk about, because she's got a ton of experience, actually, in the field that she wants to do, which is training. She just doesn't have the official title of training. So by shifting to a functional approach of the work that she's done and telling those Uh, what we call STAR stories. So STAR is an acronym that stands for Situation, Task, Action, and Result. And so that's the way you want to start talking about yourself and your accomplishments. And that's actually one of the ways that you can position yourself for what you want to do next is by really telling some some stories about the key accomplishments and the ways that you work. They can be great big impacts that you've had at work, or they can even just be the epitome of who you are and how you show up and how you work. But having those stories and knowing how to tell them is really what everything I do is about, whether it's the authentic personal branding on LinkedIn that I help you with, whether it's positioning yourself for your next role, whether it's finding your new clients, whether it's talking about how to stand out and what we're going to be needing to focus more and more on in the future of work that I'm going to talk about in just a minute. It's all about how you tell your story and communicate your value and knowing those stories that that matter most to where you're going next. So it's not just about everywhere you've been, but it's where you're going and how are you positioning yourself there. And that's true in a career search. That's true in a a you know if you're growing your business that's just true in life like rather than letting the past define you like it's good to take a look back see where you've been see what you've learned but that doesn't define you and in fact in every moment of every day we have a chance to reinvent and redefine ourselves and that's you know back to those choices we are making the choice to either stay in our old ways or move into some new ways. And that's where even like I was talking about coaching could make a huge difference because a lot of times to get out of our own way, we need a different voice in our heads. And sometimes the best way, often the best way to get that is by having a new voice that is talking to you and helping your brain hear things differently. So regardless of how you get there, oh, and then in her case, let me finish out that story. So I was coaching her actually just yesterday about creating your own opportunity because she said, well, I'm applying for these jobs and people are you know, going down their list and saying, well, I don't have these things. And I said, okay, so what if you don't go for these jobs that are already 
pre-scripted and prescribed of what they think they're looking for. And instead, you go out and meet people and connect with people who are in the fields that you want to move into, who you know you can help, and you have such a clear and compelling message about the value that you bring that they find work for you or they find a new project. Or in some cases, I've even seen people write a whole job description for someone because they want to hire that person and that talent with that much passion about what they're doing. And it happens more than you think. And that was one of the shocking things for me as I was doing career coaching over the years is I didn't think that was very common. And the first time it happened, I was blown away. I was like, whoa, that was so cool. This company wrote a, a whole new job description for this guy because he got so clear on what he was great at. And But having been on the other side of it, I've been the person writing the job description. I've been the person helping hire. I've been the HR person. I've been the hiring manager. I've been the CEO even. And you don't know exactly what you're looking for or you kind of know what you want that person to do, but you don't know what you can find in one person. And so you're really kind of throwing a dart thinking, what can I find and what's the most likely, you know, profile to write to, to cast the widest net of possibility of people who might fit this. So everything is flexible. And especially as we move more and more into this new world of constant, crazy amounts of change all the time, you have to be flexible. And in fact, he who remains flexible, the most flexible, remains in control or we could say she, right, or any any gender for that matter. But um, the person who remains the most flexible remains in control. And having that flexibility and having that ability to choose what's next and what opportunities you go after or even create for yourself and starting to have conversations with the kind of people that you want to hang around with, whether you're looking for another job, whether you're looking for clients, whether you're looking for accountability partners or coaches, you get to decide. You get to look out and, and, and see the world. And this is the, one of the reasons why I love LinkedIn. Like, I, I don't just like LinkedIn. I don't just work on LinkedIn or help people with LinkedIn. But I have come to passionately love LinkedIn because LinkedIn is this huge place for opportunity to find anybody anywhere in the world, or at least the 650 million people who are on that platform. But I have connected with the most fantastic, amazing people who are doing really cool things and they're out there on LinkedIn or other places and you can connect with them. And for the most part, people on LinkedIn are really friendly. The ones who are active, the ones who are creating content and recognizing the power of this platform and the power of, of putting their voice out into the world and and gathering the awesome people that they want to be around around them, they're so open. To, especially if you've got something going on. So what you don't want to do is be this passive lurker, right? <laughs> you want you don't want to be, and I was that. I was the person watching everyone else on LinkedIn for years, especially because I was mostly there to help my career coaching clients. So I wasn't actually doing a whole lot of it, anything with it for myself. It's been around for 20 years almost. Um, but I was I was just passively, you know, consuming content. And I was watching people, like, come alive and their lives being changed because of the opportunities that they were creating simply by sharing their voice and their journey on LinkedIn and, and growing and growing and growing and people really loving hearing about what they were going through, good and bad. And and I've talked about her before, but one of the first people I saw doing this was Michaela Alexis. And, in fact, she was one of the very first 50 active content creators who had one of the very first viral posts on LinkedIn. And she went from being jobless and just trying to use LinkedIn to find a new job without, and again, she created her own opportunity. She didn't go and find job descriptions and, and apply to them, but she just started posting about what she was doing and looking for a job. She was a digital marketer, so she figured, I'm going to show you what I can do versus tell you. So she started sharing her journey, reaching out to mentors, doing all sorts of things to grow herself through this process. And within two weeks, she had 23 job offers and everything just exploded from there. And now she's just, um, she had a shoe named after her from K-Swiss and she's been flown all over the world to do all sorts of speaking engagements. And her life has become amazing simply because she was brave enough to be active on LinkedIn and in her life and started sharing her voice and her journey. 
And you may not want all of that, and that's okay too, but people you want to connect with won't know that they want to connect with you unless you're doing something. So they have to see you. You have to show up in your own life. You have to show up fully as you and who you were meant to be. And I know a lot of people say that, but think about it like this. Think about like if there's a drawing of you and there's this outline of who you were meant to be. And when you're fully being that and not shrinking back from it, you're fully filling out that outline of yourself. But if you're shrinking back in any way, if you're holding yourself back, if you're afraid to make a move, if you're, if you're making yourself small to please other people, and man, could we spend some time there because that happens so often. And I know I spent years doing that. But when you stop apologizing for who you are and the way you think and your gifts and your talents that sometimes might be too big for other people or not fully welcomed here, wherever here is, you are not only doing yourself a disservice, but the entire world needs you to step into your full outline because any place that you're shrinking down from it is this negative space where all sorts of things can happen that aren't in alignment for you and aren't where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing. And when you step fully into it, you start showing up. And when I talk about authentic personal branding, that's what I mean, fully stepping into your full outline of who you were made to be, and people start seeing you. And here's the cool thing. Even if you haven't fully filled that out, but you're stepping closer towards it, people can see the movement. People can see the action that you're taking. And action begets action. I recently interviewed my daughter here on this show who just started her own YouTube channel. And she was uh, really reticent and, and really had been talking about it for years and wanting to do it. And when she finally got brave enough to step out and step into that, and all of a sudden, literally almost overnight, people even at school, she started having different conversations. She started showing up more brightly and brilliantly as who she was. And even though some people had no idea why, they noticed it. And you feel better. You show up better. You experience life better when you are excited about something that you're doing and that action creates that excitement for you. So take action to be even one step closer to where you're going. And guess what? You only need one step at a time. You don't have to have it all figured out. You only need to know the next step. There was a book I bought years ago called Just Enough Light for the Step That I'm On. And I think it was probably a great book. <laughs> but I never read it because I loved the cover and I loved the message of it. And I love seeing it on my bookshelf. And that was enough for me. Like, all I actually needed was that reminder that all I need is enough light for this one step. And I probably should go back and find it and read it because I'm sure it's a great book. But that's all I actually needed to be inspired to keep going and keep taking steps. So right now we're going to take a step to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to keep talking about taking the steps that you need to take to make the next decade count. Again, I'm Carla Taylor. This is Bring Your Brilliance. We are here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back. We all have a personal brand. It's what people say about you when you're not in the room. What if you knew how to clearly and confidently communicate your value in a compelling way? Tune in to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show with personal branding and LinkedIn strategist Carla Taylor to discover the tools, resources, and inspiration you need to get started and keep growing. Are you ready to make your mark? Learn how to bring your brilliance by listening to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Mountain, and 7 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. 
eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Bring Your Brilliance radio show with personal branding and LinkedIn strategist Carla Taylor. To join today's conversation, call in the U.S. at 815-880-8255 or Canada at 613-800-8736 or Skype at Inspired Choices Network. Or ask a question or send a comment by email at bringyourbrilliance at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back to Inspired Choices Network. This is the Bring Your Brilliance radio show. I am your host, Carla Taylor. And today we are talking about making the next decade count. And I was just sharing some of my story and talking about this book that I had bought and never read about only needing enough light for the next step. Um, So to tell you a little bit about some next steps with Bring Your Brilliance, uh, one of the things, I've got so many exciting things that people are really, really, they're getting excited about, which is making me even more excited about it. Because like I was saying, action creates and begets action and, and creates momentum and actually the confidence to do what you've been wanting to do. So don't wait till you have the confidence. Take a step, which will give you confidence to take the next step and the next step and the next step. So the steps that I'm taking right now with Bring Your Brilliance, we are getting ready to launch a mastermind group uh, towards the end of February that will help people who are currently in a place where they are really talented and they're really great at what they're doing, but they are not feeling fully stepping into that outline like I talked about. They're not fully feeling utilized for what they can do. They are feeling like maybe they're even wasting their talents where they are. It might be their own company or working for someone else or whatever that is. But I'm looking for people who are ready to make the next decade count and who are ready to fully discover and start living their legacy version of themselves. And I can't wait to bring this group of people together. Right now I'm actually gathering some information. So if you want to be part of that research and and giving me some input about what some of the biggest challenges that you're facing are and how I can help you most with this mastermind, please reach out to me. You can send an email to bringyourbrilliance at gmail.com or you can connect with me on LinkedIn. And I'm on there every day, so I will check my messages there as well. Uh, and on LinkedIn, it's Carla J. Taylor. If you're looking it up on uh, the direct URL or you can look me up and you'll see my face and I'm wearing my red shirt with my red background for Bring Your Brilliance. But however you connect with me, um, if you or someone you know is interested in being a part of that mastermind of it's going to be a six-week program. We're going to do some really cool things, and you're going to be connected with some amazing people. So if you're looking to connect with amazing people, that's a way to get around other people who are are working hard on bringing their full selves and doing those things they are meant to be. And you will be as inspired by the other people as you are by what you're able to do and and the program itself. So that's coming up in uh, the end of February. I've also got some LinkedIn workshops that I'm launching in January, and I've already got people excited about those and signing up for those. They're hands-on, do-with-you kind of workshop. So I'm not just going to be talking to you and telling you what to do. I'm not going to be going and doing it for you so you don't learn. I'm actually going to be keeping the class size very small so that we can work directly with each person in the room or the virtual room if we're doing the online version to make sure you're actually getting work done on your own LinkedIn during the class. So it's not one of those things where you learn a bunch of stuff and then you got to get back to your desk and start doing it and then life gets busy and you never get it done. You're actually going to walk away with stuff done from that workshop. And in fact, um, well, never mind. (laughs) I don't know what I was going to say, but uh, that is – oh, in fact, there are three different workshops. That's what I was trying to say, that uh, there are – the first – of a three-part series. So you can go to each of the three parts separately, or you can go to one or two or three. They're all independently taught, but if you do all three, you do get a discount. 
But the first one is your LinkedIn profile. So you're going to be working on your actual profile. The second one is your LinkedIn page. So whether that's your company page or your speaker page or some sort of thing that you're doing as an organization or a company or representing your own services or products, that would be your, your LinkedIn page. And then your content is the third one. So we'll actually be producing some LinkedIn content during the third workshop. So I'm really, really happy to be able to offer this to you. It was actually prompted by one of my clients who was like, this is what I want you to do. So I was like, okay. <laughs> um, and I've been getting a great response from that. So those are some things that are coming up for 2024, Bring Your Brilliance and for me. And I really want you, maybe you don't have to love LinkedIn as much as I do, but I do want you to love LinkedIn and understand the value and the opportunity that is there for you to connect with some pretty amazing people. Um, and like I said, it really, for me, feels like a playground. And, and really, life does, too. When you start getting really aligned with who you are, and I'm going to be talking next week as well with um, an um, amazing coach named Matthew Patty, who's one of my coaches that I'm working with. He is a top, top-level coach. In fact, his minimum price point is $10,000. So he's really working with movers and shakers. And he is um, someone who has created multiple six- and seven-figure businesses. So you're going to want to listen to him. And we're going to be talking next week about going from your 3D reality life of struggle and limitations to a 5D version of this limitless, zero limits type of experience. So you won't want to miss that. But that's what I'm working on in my own life as well. And in fact, I, I'm not working on that part because when you think about working on things or trying or figuring it out, that's actually where you stop yourself. So again, it's really about stepping into that alignment and stepping into who you were meant to be and starting to live life that way. And that's when this alignment opens up when you're, you know, as I was talking about before the break, stepping into that full outline of yourself things just start coming to you because now you're open and ready and able to receive it. So my life has become so magical. I can't even tell you literally in the last year, the last full year is when I fully started stepping into that because before I was helping a lot of other people bring their brilliance and do their thing and find their fit and go and find the work that they loved and show up for their coworkers or their clients in a way that, that really made an impact, but I wasn't doing that fully myself. I was I was holding myself back because I thought my role was to support everyone else. And when I stepped into my own brilliance, which was hard for me to say one year ago today, I could not say that phrase about myself because I still felt like, oh, I don't want to shine the spotlight on me. I want to shine it on everyone else. I want everyone else to shine because I'm near them, but I don't want to make it about me. And I re really learned that I'm not taking away from anyone else. In fact, I'm helping everyone way more when I do start focusing on how I can help you and letting more people know about how I can can show up for them and inspire them by what I'm doing as much as I'm helping them do it. And it has shifted everything for me. And I'm now attracting the most amazing people into my life. I cannot even believe the people I get to talk to on a regular basis. And it's just very, very cool. So uh, I talked uh, last week, if you want to hear about my year of brilliance, I actually talked a little bit more about that. But today we're talking about the decade. So we started with 2010, what was happening 10 years ago. You know where you are today and what you've done over the past 10 years. And then let's let's think about 10 years from now. So 10 years from now will be the year 2030. And if I'm marking time by the age of my kids, they are 17 now. So in 10 years, they'll be 27 years old. And I don't even want to talk about how old I'm going to be, but I'll be 10 years older than I am today. And I have some really big plans for my life, but I'm also not married to what those plans are like I'm part of my plan is to be open to whatever happens and to not put a whole bunch of expectations on what it has to look like but I can still imagine some of the the things the experiences that I want to have I know for me my kids are going to be graduated from high school next year they're going to be going off into their own lives so I'm at that 
empty nest phase of my life very soon. And I grew up living internationally and traveling traveling internationally, and I can't wait to get back to that and start all these people I'm connecting with on LinkedIn. They're all over the world. And so now I'm starting to also have people that I can go and visit and maybe even stay with or, you know, whatever. But I, I have all of these people and places I can go when I'm ready to go. And so the more I build out those relationships, that's part of why I love LinkedIn is because I'm actually creating this entire network of people that I am having the time of my life getting to know, learning about their work, learning about how they think, uh, sewing into them as much as they are into me, having this incredible reciprocity of, of sharing our gifts and having these incredible conversations about our lives and about how life works. And I'm finding more and more people who are at this level and the higher I go in my vibration, if you will, my energy, the higher level people I'm attracting. And it is getting really fun. So, um, so yeah, it is, um, it is going to be a massive change for me. And for me, especially like everybody who has kids go through empty nests, but unless you have multiples and all only multiples, um, all of mine are leaving at the same time. And so I know that's a huge shift for me. And it's part of why I'm spending a lot of time preparing now. So I'm not blindsided by it when it happens in a, in a year and a half from now, or is it even a, yeah, a year and a half from now. So 2030, there's a lot that's going to be happening in the world. And think about for you, what do you want? What do you hope to have and see in your life? And what are your visions? Like imagine, and one of the most powerful exercises that you can do, and sometimes you do it five years out, but for now, I think with this, this decade change, doing this for 10 years out, actually sitting down in front of a blank computer screen or a blank piece of paper and writing a letter to yourself as if it were the year 2030. And, you know, January 3rd, 2030, you were writing a letter to yourself about what your life looks like now and the kinds of things that you're doing and truly fully imagine yourself there and write to yourself today to say, here's where I am. And here's why I love where I am. And here are some of the things that are in my life. And you can maybe even have specific people or a type of person that you're thinking of having around you, um, where maybe you're living or visiting that day, if you're traveling, whatever that is. But imagine a specific place and a specific time and a specific day and talk about what's happening in your life at that time. And then tell yourself 10 years ago, which is today, how you got there because we innately know just like we innately choose the things that we're choosing and we innately choose the things that are actually helping us learn we also know if we stop worrying about how we know we just know what we need to get to that next place and that's that's just the beauty of all of this and how it all works together is that when we start getting really really aware of ourselves and who we are and how we think and we start getting other people outside of our head to help us get out of our own way. We know. We don't have to figure it out. And if we don't know the whole thing, we know the one step that will get us closer to it or well, the step we think will that might be a misstep, but we're still going to learn from it. And, you know, the other thing about my life is I've been through a lot of difficult things. And last night, my family, we were all at dinner and they were saying, gosh, Carla, one of the things I really admire about you is that no matter what happens to you, even the really bad things, which you've had way more bad things than most people, you still stay really positive and upbeat and and full of energy and passion for what's next, no matter what's going on. So it is possible no matter what's going on for you. So right now what's going on is we're going to take another break. And we will come back and finish talking about what's next. And I'll also explain what I mean by 120 blinks. So this is Carla Taylor on Bring Your Brilliance Radio Show. We will be right back here on Inspired Choices Network. We all have a personal brand. It's what people say about you when you're not in the room. What if you knew how to clearly and confidently communicate your value in a compelling way? Tune in to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show with personal branding and LinkedIn strategist Carla Taylor to discover the tools, resources, and inspiration you need to get started and keep growing. 
Are you ready to make your mark? Learn how to bring your brilliance by listening to the Bring Your Brilliance radio show every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Mountain, and 7 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is the Bring Your Brilliance radio show with personal branding and LinkedIn strategist Carla Taylor. To join today's conversation, call in the U.S. at 815-880-8255 or Canada at 613-800-8736 or Skype at Inspired Choices Network. Or ask a question or send a comment by email at bringyourbrilliance at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back to Bring Your Brilliance. I'm Carla Taylor. We are here on Inspired Choices Network, and we are talking about making the next decade count. We've been talking a lot about choices and how you are the the creator of your own experience and how you choose to experience things. I talked about a lot of the things that I personally have learned over the past 10 years. Um, I started to talk about my relationship learning about these patterns that I realized I was in and that I was choosing for myself so that I could heal them and how I did have the blessing of being able to heal that with my my second husband, who I'm no longer with, but he gave me that gift of being able to dig in and talk through and work through and figure out how to stop my own reactive patterns so that I now can choose a completely different type of person and I can show up completely differently and I do in my relationships. And that's where, um, you know, I've just opened up this this whole world of people that I wasn't meeting before because I wasn't in that place. And we attract people who are at the same level of healthiness that we are. So if you want to attract better, higher, vibrating people in your life, you've got to work on yourself first. And that's a gift to yourself and to the world so that you can get yourself to those levels of um, understanding yourself better and understanding other people better and gaining confidence in who you are and how you're showing up the more you do it and the more you – Uh, every step gives you confidence. So every next step is going to give you more and more and more and more confidence. And it really does work. I am a living testament to that. Um, I was talking about the the difficulties in my life that I I would tell you, like if you knew some of my story and even what I've been through with the relationships I've been in, um, it's been pretty horrific. Like, in fact, (laughs) some of my stories are notorious even in the city of what I went through, like with my first husband and that sort of thing. And and he was a pretty, pretty awful guy, especially in the court system when we were trying to go through our divorce. And um, it's bad. It was really bad. And yet I learned so much about myself and the world and everything else. And it, all of it has shaped me and grown me. And I know people used to say to me when I was in the midst of it, wow, like God must have really big plans for you. And I thought, what are they talking about? (laughs) I don't want big plans. I just want things to be better and easy. And yet, if I hadn't gone through that level of fire, if I hadn't gone through those really, 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 really challenging things, I would not have grown like I've grown. And I wouldn't have this capability like my family was mentioning last night of, I I have learned that no matter what happens, the worst of the worst of the worst can happen. And you will survive. You will get through. There is no storm in history that ever lasted forever. And there's no storm in your life that will last forever. So if you keep going and keep taking each next step, which in some points in my life, that next step was the next one minute, because that was all I could fathom getting through. But you get through step by step. And every step is a learning step for you, even all the missteps. And you at this innate soul level are actually choosing all of your own experiences because you know what you need to be who you were meant to be. Even though you don't intellectually in your head necessarily know it, in your soul you do. And that is the one thing I have learned is that I have learned how to learn (laughs) And I have learned how to be open to learning. And that's part of what's happening in the next 10 years. If we look at the future of work, even, it's all about being able to navigate the unknown, being able to learn and be open to learning and getting your ego out of your way, learning how to communicate and connect with people in a better way, learning how to resolve conflicts or 
uh, have better conversations earlier so you don't even get to the conflict in the first place. Learning how to communicate your values so that you can step into it quickly and immediately and build quick and, and connecting trust with people because as we move forward and we move into things like the gig economy is one of the things that is growing and growing and it's really this idea of people coming together on a project by project basis. And if you think about it, companies used to stay at the top of the, the New York Stock Exchange for 60 years or more as an average. And now it's like 10 or 15 years and it's getting ever shorter. And people and companies have to be able to change on a dime and be flexible. And to be flexible, they can't be carrying this huge you know, work staff. They've got to bring in people as they're needed on this project by project basis. And then the next project may or may not need those talents. And so you, whether you're an employee or a business owner or anything else, you being able to stand out for who you are and the value that you bring and communicate that in a clear and compelling way isn't just a nice to have. That is going to be how you do the future of your own life and work is by being able to do that really quickly and easily, being able to connect on the projects you want to connect with, being able to find the opportunities and create them for yourself. That's not just this like pie in the sky for a few people thing, like it kind of is actually right now. But in the future, that is how people are going to have to learn how to do life and work in the future because it's going to be a one-to-many types of employers situation rather than a one-on-one -on -one for most people. There will still be some people, the bigger companies are getting bigger and bigger, but there's a lot more also smaller and, um, you know, these, these connecting, collaborating opportunities for project by project. Some people call it the Hollywood model, like how people come together for a movie. They all have their very distinct roles and they're ex absolute experts in what they do, but they don't have such a big ego that they can't work well with everyone else and they get the project done, they create a great movie and then they move on to the next one with maybe some of the same people, maybe not. So that's how work is going to look. We're also going to have a lot more with AI, artificial intelligence and virtual reality and all of those things. And a lot of that will take over the more rote tasks or the mundane day-to-day -day kind of work. And so we also, as humans, have to bring our human brains at a higher level. And what is it that only the human can do? Well, a lot of that is that relationship building. A lot of that is connecting and collaborating across these different processes or programs. Um, you know, everybody thought the personal computer being on your desk. Remember when you first got a computer on your desk? If you're old enough, I certainly do. We didn't know what to do with that thing. <laughs> or you were used to a typewriter or, you know, whatever else. And, um, you know, just like Microsoft Office Suite, and it's all like, oh, my goodness, you know, Word documents, you don't have to use the, the whiteout stuff. <laughs> you know, I mean, things have changed so much, and yet it's still just a tool. It's a higher-level tool, and that's what's going to be happening with AI. It cannot replace the human brain. So focus on developing yourself and your life and your skills around what's unique about you and how you think and what you can do to be this collaboration architect even, a relationship building type of person. Um, AI can't do that stuff. They can't do the human part of it. So if you're going to focus on any any career or any type of business in the future, also focus on those human elements that you can do and you can bring because that is your differentiator. And how you do it um, is unique to you. And you've got your own unique blend of gifts and talents. And you've also got your own background of experiences that have shaped and formed the way that you see the world. So get really good at communicating that and connecting with, with your own power and stepping fully into your own outline of who you were meant to be so that you can bring more and more of that and, and start contributing on a project that you really want to be doing. Um, and so that's what I'm going to be focusing on. I mentioned earlier in this show about the masterminds that I'm putting together to help people do that more um, and also to learn more about LinkedIn and how to communicate that value there and everywhere else. So whatever you're doing on LinkedIn is really just how you're doing life. It's just a public platform for you to be able to communicate and connect um, in a really uh, amazingly global way uh, because that's where world, the world is going. So Join me next week. We'll be talking to Matthew Patty about upgrading to a 5D reality of your life. I can't wait for that conversation and that show. Thanks for listening to and another episode of Bring Your everybody. Brilliance with Carla Taylor. For the latest updates and info on personal branding, please follow and interact with Carla Taylor on LinkedIn. And be sure to visit www.itstimetobringit.com. 
Join Carla Taylor every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Mountain, and 7 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com.